count you in and then it's all you. Okay. Three, two, one. I'm gonna let this rock for a little bit. So I'm feeling this Friday. Let's go. Got some more millions. I keep me a knot. I created history. It made me a lot. He tried to diss me and it ain't no fault. We call him Chops because they gonna chop. Took her out of violence because her pussy pop. I run it like Nike. We got it on lock. Call it out. I'm the boss man in a suit with no tie. I can't be sober. I gotta stay high. Put me some syrup in the can and it's dry. Riding this special like Bunny and Clyde. Don't worry, baby. I keep me some fire. She made names and burgers. She cannot decide. The ladies must say. Go to surprise. I'm sleep on this lady, her pussy up right. Digging up back while I'm gripping her side. Hey guys, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to episode 10 of the Danzo Financial Podcast. I am your host, Charles Danzo. It's been a while since we last connected. I want to first shout out and thanks, 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 thanks. Super thank you to our Spotify as well as Apple podcast listeners. I know um, you know. You guys have been rocking with us since episode one, and we continue to grow. So I definitely want to thank you guys as well as our YouTube viewership. Please subscribe at Danzo Financial Group for more details. Thank you. Today for episode 10, we're going to be discussing corporate innovation. A lot of people have been asking in terms of how do I get my business off the ground, in terms of how do I market to the right people, how do I innovate my business for those of you guys that don't understand the definition of innovation, let me please um, give a clear-cut definition. Um, that basically is f- introducing new methods, advanced and original to your business as an individual. That's ideas. So this podcast will be for my entrepreneurs. This will be for my 9-to-5 workers, which should be about 98% of our listeners. So I'm definitely excited to rock with you guys. It's me and you today. We're going to just be speaking, educating you know, to each other in terms of, obviously, you guys aren't going to be speaking to me, but for the most part, we're going to be just, you know, I want you guys to, like, whoever's listening to just take some notes. Any questions that you have, email us at danzofinancialgroup.com, at gmail.com, excuse me, to kind of, like, you know, just get a better understanding. I first off do want to give my topic points for you guys for episode 10. This basically will detail um, innovation, introduction, excuse me, to corporate innovation. I will give a definition, a real world example. I will give benefits versus negatives of corporate innovation as well. And also the four P's of the marketing strategy. A lot of companies have adapted the four P's of marketing strategy. That was initially started by Procter & Gamble. I'm not going to go in detail in terms of telling you what Procter & Gamble does, But for you guys that use soaps in terms of all the soaps that you have for both washing clothes, washing your dishes, washing yourself, Procter & Gamble has some involvement in that. For all you guys that use all the baby food products, all the the food products in your shelves for canned goods, um, cleaning supplies, Procter & Gamble did all that. Do your research. Procter & Gamble has definitely been the cornerstone of marketing, of creating a marketing strategy. The most important individual that's used this is Nipsey Hussle. For you guys that don't know Nipsey Hussle, he was a West Coast legendary rapper and also a great entrepreneur in his own right. A lot of people really didn't see his entrepreneurial light till unfortunately he passed, but this guy's been doing it for years. Even before he first uh, even started getting big with his rapping, he was doing the entrepreneurial venture. But to kind of just get back to the marketing strategy, I will be discussing the four P's of marketing strategy presented by Procter & Gamble, which will include product, place, promotion, and price, as well as affiliate marketing. What Affiliate marketing, for you guys, I'm going to give a definition, a real-world example, by discussing a lot of the companies that use um, affiliate marketing, excuse me, which will be Fashion Nova, Amazon, Apple, um, the benefits of uh, affiliate marketing through social media presented by Fashion Nova. I I will speak on that company in particular because that is the company that a lot of people should be paying attention to 
in terms of how they do their four P's, how they do their product, their placement, their promotion, and price, how they target the young crowd, the young crowd being the millennials, especially um, a, lot of, a lot of young women, uh, women in the age of, I'll say, about um, 18 to about 37. This, that is the target group as w- that they kind of focus on, as well as young males now. And I'll explain why they do that. But that is very important to note for you guys. And I want you guys to pay attention for that segment as well. And also the Venture Venture 90, that was a vision created by Nipsey Hussle. They called that the Urban WeWork, the Urban WeWork of Vector 90 presented by Nipsey Hussle. I'm excited to discuss and I'm excited to kind of work with you guys. So first, let me start off with corporate innovation again. Like I said, it's featuring new methods, advanced and original. Everybody that has a business, everybody that works in a nine-to-five job should be paying attention to the innovation, the new ideas, the new, um, the new products that a company may introduce. If you work for a lot of tech, tech companies, um, a lot of even business companies, ideas that are presented to the company. That is something that's to be paid attention for because that showcases where your company that you work for in your nine-to-five setting and or you own your own business is going. If you're a CEO a founder, um, whatever title that is used nowadays, um, you know, (laughs) I think it's important, like I said, because you are the visionary, you are the leader of your business. That's something to note, something to take from, something to have a a good understanding of in terms of innovation in your business. Every year, you should be thinking about innovating your business. Every year, you should be paying attention to what business, what company you work for, from McDonald's all the way to Goldman Sachs, from Johnson & Johnson to whatever, if you're a nurse in the hospital, what your, your medical director, your lead director is doing, if you're a lawyer, if you work for a law firm, what your law firm is doing, how they're impacting the innovation, the new ideas, how that, in fact, impacts the consumer. The consumer is the clients, the clients that you work with. If you work in fast food, your clients are the people that come in. If they have a new machine at McDonald's, that's a form of innovation. It makes things a lot faster moving as opposed to coming and ordering to a human. They have robots now. A lot of banks now have robots that are used. I think that's important to note because, again, it's more of the self-sufficiency of the technological age that we're kind of entering or we have been entering since end of 99 into 2000. So I know a lot of uh, individuals that are about 18, 19 might not understand what we mean for us 90s babies, 80s babies, and and before, but Again, we didn't really get the full scope of the technological age, even though it is in our era being millennials for the most part. For I'm speaking for, to my millennials because I'm a millennial myself. But what I mean is we understood in the 90s how it was not having technology moving into 2000s where everything you do in terms of business is done as in terms of um, you know technology. So that's important. The, I, I want to I quote... Um, somebody that I kind of modeled my business after as well, um, Mike Bloomberg, uh, an individual. If you guys don't know Mike Bloomberg, he was the former mayor of New York. For my New Yorkers out there, you guys should know, um, you know, who exactly he is by now. If you guys, you know, Bloomberg was probably the guy when you was, uh, when you guys had a lot of snow and when y'all thought that y'all was off, he was probably, he was probably telling y'all take the back roads to the school. That's probably the guy that you guys are thinking about is Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg, he owns, um, Bloomberg LP, um, as well as Bloomberg News. I know you guys see that a lot online, so that's somebody to note. But what he said, a quote that he used that I found very interesting, is, is he said, competing against successful companies is relatively easy. I found that kind of interesting because I was saying to myself, how is, how, how am I, as owner of Danzo Financial Group, going to compete against somebody like Bloomberg LP, where you guys have millions and millions of dollars and I'm just a guy that's scrambling, getting a couple thousand here and there, even putting up my own money half the time to just, you know, get investors to kind of and clients to kind of come into my vision, come into my business. As And I speak for myself as well as my team, because there is no I in team. You need, a t- you need a strong team as a as a corporation to elevate yourself. Some, you can't do it yourself. That's another thing to know for my entrepreneurs out there. But what he said, to get back to what I wanted to say, was he said, big companies have bureaucracies, excuse me, that, that protect top management. Information flows, but never gets to the top. 
And I I, I try I wanted to understand what he means by that. But then I was in a conference about a couple months ago w- with my nine to five job. I work for J.P. Morgan. So for me, I'm not going to say what I do specifically for, as you guys know, contractor rights. <laughs> but what I will say is working for a big corporation like that as well I, in my nine to five setting. Yes, I do work a nine to five job for you guys that may think I just run Danzo Financial Group. But what I want to say is a lot of times ideas are presented from us employees. But the thing is, you got to speak to one guy, to another guy, to another guy. No, no push a T pun intended, but it's like we are literally signed to three or four individuals because you have your manager. Then your manager has a manager and your manager has another manager that the idea that you may have as an employee that you're trying to get to your CEO to have an understanding. Let's say um, I want to use an example in terms of how you guys may do a certain work in terms of as opposed to doing the olden ways where it's more manual, why not have it automated? A lot of times those ideas don't really go to the top management because of the fact, again, you're not really going to speak to the CEO a lot of times of these big corporations. And a lot of times these CEOs don't really care because end of the day, if the company is successful, the CEO believes that, or not even the CEO, but the top manager believes, why Why do I have to change something if my company is successful already? Fair. I want you guys to ponder on that however you want to look at it. Like I said, this is for any job that you do. and from You could do it from business to healthcare to law to um, just a simple hustle that you have. If you if you a hustler out here, you know, I think that's another thing to know is what are you doing to innovate your business? And a lot of times, a lot of people that are successful, you can even think of yourself when you're doing really well. You sometimes feel like you're untouchable, right? <laughs> you guys should definitely think about that. What I mean to say is that when something is doing is going good for you, a lot of times you don't want to deviate away from that because, again, <laughs> That's something that is going on that's really well for you, something that that you're doing that's benefiting you. So, of course, if somebody's trying to tell you something otherwise that you you may think or that is the person just trying to say something, they don't really know anything. Why are they saying this to me a lot of times? But I believe a lot of the successful corporations do try to speak to the guy that just works at that desk, you know, in terms of um. I want to I want to say Apple is one. I don't work for Apple, and again, I don't know. I'm just speaking from what I see from my outside perspective. So any Apple workers listening, again, it's not me. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm an employee of Apple and or I know anybody that works in Apple per se. But what I mean by that is product placement is important for a company like that, and ideas from in terms of their employees. The reason why I say that is again, Apple is a company that. Is, should be very innovative. They have various te- technological tools from a, from a phone to a laptop um, to head, uh, headsets and beyond. I can keep going and going in terms of the products that they push. But you have to be a thinker to innovate those products that you have. Again, like I said, and that's not just coming from Tim Cook. Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. That comes from a team that Tim Cook surrounds himself with, and that team reaches out to the individuals that are inside Apple Inc., as well as what those individuals of Apple Inc. are speaking to their, their families about, their friends about, their significant other about, their um, whoever the case they're speaking to on the street. That's how they gather that information. That's how they're able to say, okay, this is what we can do to improve our, our iPhone in this sense. There's, it's not a, it's not a, a coincidence that every, every holiday season – Around November, October, November, there seems to be a new iPhone coming out. It seems to be a new announcement of I, iPods 2 or whatever the case is, though, the headsets. If I said it wrong, I apologize. But <laughs> I'm a, fortunately, I'm an Android user. so. <laughs> but it's the same thing, even for Android. Same thing. A lot of these companies, not even just Apple, we could use different corporations. The most successful ones don't just stop at the CEO. What I mean by what I mean by that is saying, of course, it, it, it gets to the CEO because he is the fi- he or she is the final say. But what I mean by that is saying that the CEO says, OK, what are we going to do for 2020 when you when you're already in March of 2019 that can help push our product that can help allocate additional revenue for our business? So, again, with that being said, 
that's something just to think about. If you are a business owner, you should always think about a year ahead. Once you're once once that year starts that you're already in, you're already thinking a year ahead how to innovate, how to be better, how to push your product out further to even to even more clientele in terms of how to innovate. A lot of now we're entering the app age. Websites are I would say websites are beneficial, but apps are essential. Let me please explain for, for those that didn't listen to the first time I said it. I'm going to say it very, very slowly for you guys. Websites are beneficial, but they're not essential. What I mean by that is saying that it is a benefit to have a website. That is true. And I'm just... I'm speaking, in, that's a form of innovation for a lot of startup businesses. I'm now going to discuss startup businesses. What I mean by to say that is having websites is something that it is beneficial because you do need an uh, individual, a client, somebody that's interested in learning more about your vision, your business as a as an owner, where they can go to, to see that in the forefront. That is a website. But a lot of times websites are built from other corporations where in terms of, let's say, um, Wix. Wix is a site. Um, GoDaddy, I could keep going on. When you have an app, that information is solely yours. So, example, you're, sp- you're listening to Danzo Financial Podcast. If I had an app that I built, which it is coming on the way, by the way, because I take my own advice when I say a lot of these things. But, again, having an app is important but it's not it's not i'm not going to say that i'm not going to push to the audience to say that you have to have it but like i said the uh, is being is essential so like i said having something where an individual can go to and have everything in one setting as opposed to going to one thing to another thing to another thing and it's yours you could you have the data the information of that person going to your to your app that's data let's say example um I'm going to use an example. Um, I'm looking at uh, Brittany. Brittany is um, a random random friend of mine, and she says, okay, what is Danzo Financial Group? A lot of times I explain Danzo Financial Group, and she will say, okay, cool. She might follow me on Instagram. She might follow me on Facebook. She might follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever the case is. What if one day Mark Zuckerberg and company said, let me shut down all social media sites? Does that mean you stop your business? No. You have to be creative. You have to think outside the box. That's another form of innovation. So what comes into play? Let's say the Internet shuts down one time and where your website is not working temporarily. Instagram is done. You have a client. You have clients pushing orders for you. If you sell, um, example, let's say you're a, you're a, hair, a hair beautician. You're selling um, hair, care, uh, hair care products. Um, hair it's itself i i love using that example because that is probably the most profitable business right now and i anybody that's in it uh ladies men i commend you guys because again that is a business that you're smart and you were innovative enough to get into so i definitely commend that so but to get to my point my point is this having an app you have that data you have your own marketing thing where somebody could just subscribe even if that individual is not always going to your app, the fact that that person already downloaded um, your app, that data is already on, on file. That's why a lot of look at any of the companies right now that are most successful. I named Apple. I can say Amazon. I can say any of these companies. They have an app outside of just a website and being on Instagram, social media. And a lot of times if they are on social media, it's just to promote the next product that's coming out. But everything is found through that website, through that app, more importantly. Because, again, that's how you build your email list. That's how you build your clientele. Building your clientele is not going to be through just saying email. Because when you do do email, a lot of times that's something that it's important. But, again, email lists, a lot of times people just – I sometimes go on my email, but I don't really, like, check it like that. Because at the end of the day, like I said, that data is not really – that that like somebody could send me an email. A lot of time I just put it to spam. I could just delete it and then I don't really care. But having that app, I already have your email stored. So if I have a product coming out, I'm already being I'm already pushing it out. When I download, when um uh, I saw uh, a friend of mine, he had the he had the app um through Apple, and uh, I see a lot of people sometimes. I mean I'm on the train going to work. I see they have Bloomberg News updates 
bing, bing, I see it on the phone. <laughs> I know that's a crazy sound I just made. Anything, that update is up. Even if that person just swipes, it's already up. So you, the human mind tracks tracks information for three to five seconds. So even if you look at that, with that three to five second window, you're already looking in terms of what update is already up. So it could say, hey, um, let's say Charles says there's this new update coming out. You Nine out of 10 times, you're going to want to learn more about what product is coming out, what service that you have out through your app. If I'm sending it through email, I don't really care. Half the time, I don't, I'm not, I'm so, I could be so tired from work, exhausted from work. I'm not even going to check my email for another week. So you're, li- you're missing a week of money, a couple of days of money. When you have your app, it's right there. It's available to you. So that's why I said having that innovation as well is very important. And that moves on to the four Ps of the marketing strategy by Procter & Gamble. Every company that you basically right now are looking at that are most successful, and I love saying Amazon, I love saying Berkshire Hathaway, I am love saying Facebook, I love saying, um, um, what is it, Jumping Jack's Tax, I love saying um, Tulsa Real Estate, Jay Morrison, I love saying um, Combs Enterprises, Diddy, Fenty Beauty, Rihanna, Rock Nation, Jay-Z, I'm just naming you guys' favorite individuals that, you know, athletes, entertainers that you guys love. They adopt the four Ps, product, placement, promotion, and price. The product, I'm using Rihanna example, Fenty, that's her product. Her placement, where is her placement? Social media, her website, through LVMH, which is the, the main, um, the main um, individuals that she's under in terms of that umbrella. LVMH is, I think, Lou, Louis... Uh, Moet Hennessy and um, I forget the other, what the M is, but <laughs> the point is those individuals push it through the promotion is through commercials, through um, if you go to the store through brick and mortar Macy's, um, Sephora, all of that Fenty Beauty is there for my for my ladies. I know this um, because again I have sisters, I have in, uh, women that I speak to that tell me these things, so that's why I say. My friends, I understand, and I know how this is done. And I, I did my research to make sure so anybody that challenges me, I did my research so you guys can't come back to me on this. And pricing. Pricing is also important. The, the most particular type of pricing that I love is, is stores or, or web, web stores like e-commerce stores, excuse me, like Amazon Prime. Perfect example. And what I'm going to jump into is Fashion Nova. Amazon Prime. I remember a couple of months ago where they had deals. They had they had cameras for like um what thirty nine ninety nine. Did I go to Best Buy? Did they charge me almost two hundred for? Love it. They have clothing resellers that you can resell. If you have a if I have an iPhone, excuse me, excuse me guys. Um, if I have an iPhone, if I go to the Apple Store. It's almost, let's say, a lot of times, 700, 800, and even now, a phone sells for almost 1,000. If I go to a reseller through Amazon, through eBay, all these companies, a lot of times, they buy the phone. Somebody might use it once, might not even use it at all, resell it to me for half off. It could be 500, 400. That's a deal right there. That pricing brings more clientele. And word of not, there's nothing more important than word of mouth. Word of mouth is important. For those that have a business, Do promotions, have sales, have giveaways, promote the hell out of your product and service. Trust me, because Amazon was doing that. That's why Jeff Bezos is now the richest man in the world, because Jeff Bezos just 10, 15 years ago, I would have passed by him in the street and I wouldn't have known him. But he steadied the four P's that Procter & Gamble has shown you, product placement, promotion and price. And it's still relevant to this day. I said Fenty Beauty. Fenty Beauty, Rihanna doesn't grow almost half a billion, if not soon to be a billionaire herself in the next three to four years if she doesn't understand this. Her team, most importantly, doesn't understand this because you have to have the right team. It's not just you doing this. That's why I say for my, for my entrepreneurs, my business owners, have a team. Build a team. Do not just hire your friends. Don't even hire your friends for the most part because, again, your friends are always going to be yes men half of the time. They A lot of times, the best friends do challenge you, but it's better to work with individuals that don't know you. Why do they say, why do you think they say strangers support you more than your friends, more than people that you know? Because of the fact strangers don't know anything about you. They don't know that 
this is Charles that used to help me. This is Charles that used to be in my class, used to do this with me. So they don't take advantage of that. A lot of times people that know each other, they get very comfortable around them. So they do certain things that they feel like or or handle certain situations because they feel like, oh, because this person knows me, you know, I have that little lean way to act this way. Not in business. Business doesn't work like that. That Why do you think? And if a lot of times uh, people that you see that have been friends, a lot of times they start out as business partners. I give you an example: Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. They were business friends, even as kids. Um, I could say um, Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Yes, they were friends to the public eye. Anyway, I'll say that. But again, they started Apple together as a business, so you already know what you have outright. That vision is shared. A lot of times, your friends, your family, don't share the same vision that you share. That's okay. But you you do that over there. We trying to do big over here because you're the one that's going to break your generational curse for those listening. It just doesn't have to be through a business. Not everybody has to be a business owner because not everybody is going to be a business owner. God didn't put everybody here to be a business owner. That's why the top 1% are the wealthy billionaires and then everybody else falls in the middle or the end as, as rich, middle, poor. My point to say is there's different ways to invest. There's different ways to do things have the right team of individuals, have the right circle of friends. That's also a team. You don't have to be a business owner just to have the right team. Team is also the circle of friends. Build yourselves up, guys, again, and challenge yourself. Don't be comfortable. Don't get complacent. Invest in stock. Understand stock first. Do Always do your research. That goes back to the four Ps. Like I said, in order to understand your marketing strategy, that marketing strategy could be broken down in a business as well as amongst yourselves how you promote yourself, how you place yourself in this world, how you do, how you, what is your worth in this world? I'll use that example as well. What do you, what, what can you say your worth to this world is to yourself? Most importantly, where, what do you do each day that challenge you to be better? Save guys, invest. I put myself in debt in my early twenties. I'm still feeling it now, but every day I do research every day. I ask myself, what can I do better? I learn from individuals. I learn from those closest to me, my significant other, my, uh, in terms of the right, the right that she does and the wrong that she does. My, also, my family, the wrongs that they do and the right that they do. Cause that, and I educate myself. I listen to a lot of the individuals that, are, um, that have done it the right way. You know, in terms of, um, I like Dave Ramsey. I like, uh, I like Jay, Dre Morrison, those individuals. I like listening to those people, real estate, investing, uh, savings, credit utilization, all of that in one. Um, those are individuals that I look to in terms of motivation to help build myself most importantly. But like I said, the four Ps. I know I, I'm not all over the place. I'm going to tie this in for you guys for, so you guys are still with me. I hope you guys are still with me that's listening. The four Ps tied in. Product, placement, promotion, price. I love it. And now that introduces probably the next Amazon that's coming up that you guys, I'm telling you, pay attention to because this company is hungry. This company is killing it right now. And people not paying attention fully. Some are. I'm not going to say that people aren't. Some people are. But I'm telling you, this company in the next three to five might be the number one fashion company based off the four Ps and what I was articulating to you guys in terms of how they market themselves in today's technological era, tech, tech, tech era, I'll say that. That's Fashion Nova, guys. Fashion Nova, I'm going to give you guys their business model, and I want you guys to listen to exactly to what you may think it's successful for your business. We're successful for your nine to five company. It's successful for yourself as a consumer. Cause a lot of times you may not even buy from Fashion Nova, but you have a friend that does. You have a girlfriend that does. You have a boyfriend now that does because they have Fashion Nova men. Affordable, smart, in terms of target, these people are geniuses. I give I give the CEO props. This man is a genius. Surround himself with the right individuals, relates to the youth, us millennials, understands our culture of celebrity culture that we love from the Kim Kardashians 
down to the Erica Minas <laughs> of the world, guys. We love celebrity culture, guys. Fashion Nova tackles that. And let me give you guys a breakdown of what I mean. Just give me, I'm, I wrote down some points for you guys, and I want you guys to listen. You guys could take notes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take 10 minutes of your time to discuss Fashion Nova, please. Um, if, you're, if you're anywhere noisy, please get somewhere quiet. If you're, if you're at work right now, listen in. That meeting can wait. Just tell you, no, nah, I'm joking. Go to the meeting, but afterwards, just listen. If, if you're at home right now, listen to what I'm about to explain, what I, why I say Fashion Nova is the company that's going to maybe might not have the big, the big splash of Amazon, but they damn sure coming. I'm telling you. They might not cha- they might not challenge those Jeff Bezos of the world, and they don't have to because you don't have to emulate exactly everything that per- the individual does. You don't have to be the Kobe to Jordan per se, but you can take little spin moves that Kobe learned from Jordan. You can take little 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 jump shots the the way that he 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 poisons himself, the way that he trains, the mentality, much like his predecessor Jordan. Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova sells mainly over the internet. However, it has five physical stores. A lot of people might not know that. Located in Southern California. Unlike Zara, who uses more of a brick and mortar business model. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brick and mortar is basically um, a lot of the companies you go to, um, like a Macy's, uh, like a Zara. Those are physical present stores. You actually have to go to those stores. They don't sell. They sell online, but they're more prone to have people go to their physical stores, their infrastructure. Back to Fashion Nova. Who uses more of a brick and mortar business model? That's Zara. Innovation from millennials as that's the focus on Fashion Nova customer base. Millennials are ages, I looked up millennials, the age range, 22 to 37. So uh, ladies, um, gentlemen, 22 to 37 is the age range that Fashion Nova targets for their business. That right there, that's placement. That I'm still on the four Ps, guys. Now, let me please say the four Ps again. Product, placement, promotion, price. That's placement. That's a form of placement. Let me continue. Fashion Nova is ultra fast in terms of fashion. Ultra fast. That, hmm, that sounds like a company. What company did I mention before that does ultra fast shipping? Oh, Amazon. Introduced an Amazon Prime model of fast delivery, Fashion Nova. It releases almost a thousand fresh items every week, as confirmed by Fashion Nova's founder, Richard Sagan. If I said that wrong, I apologize. Richard S A G H I A N. You can look him up. Everyone wants to dress like their favorite celebs, from Kim Kardashian and Kylie Jenner down to Rihanna and Beyonce. I agree. Fashion Nova tracks these trends and responds fast on demand signals. Once they spot a signal, there is nothing to stop them. It knows what outfit its customers want next day or week and where they will look for it. I agree. If something is trending in an award show, 9 out of 10 times, Fashion Nova is going to it is going to take a long look at it and start working on that design immediately. It's the reason why you will see, let's, I'll use an example, Kim Kardashian having a sleek cut, jean cut, or, or whatever dress that she may wear, and the next day it's on the Fashion Nova website. That's not a coincidence. They have individuals that go to these award shows, from the Grammys to the Oscars to the BET Awards to any other shows. Um, was it MTV Awards? that go on purpose or watch from their TV and track what these celebrities are wearing, the most popular celebrities in, in, cult, in pop culture right now. I named you Kylie Jenner and uh, Beyonce, Rihanna, Kim Kardashian. Um, now they're doing males, so I'm going to flip to the fashion guys. Maybe there's a Fab, Chris Brown, all those individuals. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Fashion Nova tracks these trends and rep- responds fast to demand signals. Once they spot a signal, there's nothing to stop them. It knows what outfits its customers want next day or week or where they will look for it. I purposely say this again for you guys. If something is trending in an award show, like I said, it will not take Fashion Nova long to start working on that design. I agree. 
Cardi and Kylie Jenner are some of the biggest influence that received Fleet Crovin on Instagram. You guys can go to Cardi B, Kylie Jenner's Instagram right now. You will see Fashion Nova promoted heavily on their page. Except Kylie Jenner, unlike most of the celebrities, actually gets paid a significant amount by Fashion Nova. Now, I couldn't find the details for you guys, but I'm sure you guys could do your research. Everybody now, you got a shade room and all of them. They got, like, top flight security in there, like CIA agents. I'm sure you guys can find that number. But Kylie Jenner posted one time on her Instagram and promoted Fashion Nova. Their sales went up 50000 that same day. I, I promise you guys, you guys could look that up. How is one individual able to push 50000 50000 is a yearly salary, guys. And Fashion Nova did that in one day just by putting their clothing on Kylie Jenner, which is probably the most popular person. I don't even say woman. The most popular person right now in terms of one of the most popular people, excuse me, in the pop culture world, in the celeb world. Now Fashion Nova has 14.7 million, oh, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Now they have 16.7 million. Last, just last year, they were 14.7. So they grew 2 million more in the span of less than a year almost because we're not even at the end of 2019. We still have a, a month and a half to go. The focus is not on price when it comes to Fashion Nova. More so, it focuses on its customers. Their customers want and the quality of needs. To become a hit, you must first have a very good understanding of your target market. I stressed this guys to you guys this earlier. What attracts it and how to reach it? I agree. The internet right now is the best channel for us as millennials. You have Netflix, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, Twitter, like I mentioned, LinkedIn for your job searching. You have Amazon for your shopping in terms of uh, a lot of people now in the millennial gen not even millennial generation. Now we're teaching our parents that you don't have to go mom and dad all the time to the store. You can you can buy it online. Amazon made that popular. Fashion Nova ran with it, ran with that baton. I love it. Like I said, I love this because, again, they focus solely not solely, but for the most part, I would say 95% on us millennials. Young young women now evolving into young men of all sizes now. I love it. All shapes, my queens, um, my I see a, I say queens, my black queens, not even just black, um, any race is is focused on. Any design that you like, um, young ladies, young gentlemen now, now we're down to transitioning more into the gentleman, so I like that. The focus is not on price, but what our customers want. And the internet, like I said, is the reach for that. Because again, this this is the youth, and that's what, and like I said, the different platforms that we go to has allowed Fashion Nova to be ranked number six, number six favorite site by young people. Millennials are net sav. We're a net savvy generation that we love shopping online, like I emphasized to you guys. We want good fashion and affordable pricing. That's why I see a lot, a lot of women now transitioning to men buying Fashion Nova online. You can get it instantly. Just go to your, to your phone, to your laptop, instantly buy the, the outfit you want for, from a $20 to $50 range for the most part. Yes, I know there are more expensive products, but for the most part, it's $20 to $50 range, which I love. Fashion Nova has exploited trends of our generation preferences. And that's what I love because they right there have learned the four P's of product placement, how to promote, and also the pricing. Like I've emphasized, I'm going to tie the four P's in for you guys at the end of this. It says young people are the largest. I did research on young people are the largest market segment for fashion brands in the United States. And around the United around the United States, Fashion Nova made an estimated 400 million in sales just last year alone, and are estimated to make 600 to 700 million at the end of this year and growing. As a fashion company that mostly sells online to millennials of between the ages of 22 to 37, Fashion Nova again made an estimated 400 million 
alone in 2018 and is expected to make between 6 to 700 million at the end of this year and is ranked the 32nd best fashion company in this in this country the brand offers Easy shipment option for his customer. I know this because I know individuals close to me. I haven't bought from Fashion Over, but I'm going to start. Because I'm me listening to this, I'm already getting excited and interested and wanting to even buy from there. I'm tired of going to these high-end brands that their clothes, you know, are, are nice, to, nice to wear, but they're so expensive. You know, right now we're in the, we're in the age of learning to save, learning to budget, everything the pr- apparently they say we're supposed to be here in this recession. Don't 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 count me on that in 2020 coming up, end of 2020. But we'll see. But my point to say is we wanna we wanna learn how to save and invest. That is our focus. So having a brand like Fashion Nova allows us um, to basically shop at affordable price and have clothing that we like, that is trendy, that fits our our motto, our motif, the name that we carry. You know, because again, a lot of times we wanna wear we wanna wear that nice outfit that we see. A lot of our celebrities wear. We want to rock it so we can flex on the gram as they, as as we've all done one or one time or another with the hot jacket, the hot outfit, uh, ladies that we, uh, that we're rocking, you know. Um, so because we want to impress our friends, we want to look good for, we want to look good for ourselves and showcase to the world that we're looking good as well. So Fashion Nova focuses on that, keys in on that, and what they showed, what they shown for me. And I want to share with you guys is you don't need much physical infrastructure now. Nowadays, it's true. You can work a lot of times, even in your nine to five job. A lot of times you guys are working from home. A lot of times you don't need to go into the office a lot of times now because everything is so technology based, technology free. Everything now is translated in a computer at your a phone is like a laptop now you where you can do so many things you can work in your business answer emails build apps to answer to to send out orders um you know do different things just through your phone alone and fashion nova has taken over that platform and that's why i say they're geniuses in that regard apart from where and and, and as opposed to more of the macy's that's uh, or not, i'm not even using them to pick on them not at all but what i'm saying is i just want to compare the two from what an amazon fashion nova are doing to Maybe what we used to go to, our parents go to still, maybe the Macy's, J.C. Penney's of the world, where they still are, are, are incurring millions of dollars in warehouse costs, infrastructure costs to keep that real estate, keep those buildings in your community going in terms of when you're going to Macy's, when you're going to these uh, brick and mortar uh, businesses. Fashion Nova doesn't have to do that. They just have five companies in California that, not five companies, excuse me, five buildings of that company of Fashion Nova in California and they're just pushing their brand mostly about 95% through website branding, which I love. And and again, they're focused in U.S. and Canada, and they're looking to expand globally. And I know they'll do successful in Africa, Europe, Asia, all those, every continent. I see, I see fashion over the next 10 years tackling, and I love it. Since the success of Amazon, Internet has become a sales channel. I mentioned that to you guys earlier. Marketing and sales strategy used by Fashion Nova as well as its pricing strategy have helped build a trust, which is key to ret- retaining a young customer. Said it right there. Now, if you guys haven't been paying attention, or ha- I hope you guys have been, I named the four product. Their product is the clothing that you buy at Fashion Nova. Their placement. Their placement is on their web- websites. It's, 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 it's on their website, yes. On Instagram, their Instagram as well. Their hashtags, their giveaways that they do a lot of times where they have deals even more so than just the $20 to $50 range that you may pay. Maybe a little bit of additional tax. I don't know if you pay tax. Of course, I'm sure you do. But my point to say is their placement, ex- they know the exact time they want to do it. I bet you look at Fashion Nova right now in the next week or so towards Thanksgiving and entering the holiday season. I'm sure they're going to be doing a Black Friday giveaway, much like other companies, but you can do it from the comfort of your home. You don't have to get up or get up and go at 4 a.m. after Thanksgiving dinner to go wait outside just to get your outfit that you're looking for for Christmas, whatever the case is. Do your Christmas shopping. You can do it strictly from your from your home. You want to get a cute outfit for yourself? You want to get a nice outfit, fellas, a ladies, a cute outfit? Like I said, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go out in that cold. And I, It's going to be a cold winter, ladies and gentlemen, just letting you all know. <laughs> Promotion. They have promote. There's a reason why you see Fashion Nova on 90% of Instagram, Instagram, uh, 
influencers. Influencers are the beautiful women that you see with the curvy body, the um the the handsome man for my ladies now that they're moving into promoting fashion over. Um even now celebrities, they're making six figures. There's women before that they weren't getting these six figure checks. And I'm talking about these are women that you may know. These are women that you may know that might be promoting fashion over that is making about eighty to ninety, depend depending on how how they want to market or cater to that brand. There's a reason why if you go on the Fashion Nova Instagram now, a lot of a lot of them look like the celebrities that I said of Kylie Kim, um, Riri, whoever the case is. There's there's a specific reason. Pay attention that Fashion Nova gets the curvy body, the uh, the attract or handsome face, whatever the case you want to use or however way you want to word it. The the way that they're placing it, similar to how the bodies you may see of the Cardi B's of the world, of um whoever, um Kim Kardashian, uh, Kylie Jenner, there's a reason why a lot more of those bodies are being presented. Now, I'm not going to get into the, whether that's right or wrong, whatever the case is. My point is I'm speaking strictly from the four P's of promotion, product placement, and price. In terms of a business person, how they market that, how they build their revenue stream, how how they allocate their revenue stream in terms of getting more clients, more uh, young men and women to follow them, to promote for them. Um, that allows somebody like me to say, I want to shop here because I see this cute outfit and it's affordable at this price. This person got it on. I'm like, damn, she's bad or he's a tr- he's handsome, whatever the case is. Did Fashion Nova. Good job. Amazing job. That's all I have for you guys. Like I said, I've 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 given you guys the blueprint um of what I wanted. This is innovation p- presented to you. I want to end it by saying again. Look around your neighborhood. You may see a lot of stores closing. You may see the store you used to go to as a child closing. Um Toys R Us, um, whoever. A lot of times, the most successful companies now in that industry, in that world, that are the most innovative companies. Those are companies that use your likeness to their benefit. What you want, you're going to get. There's a reason why when Apple comes out, and I like using these companies. I know I keep using them, but I'm going to stick to those companies for a reason. When Apple has a product come out, they go all out. And you guys, including myself, a lot of time has fallen victim to it without even realizing it. I'm going to get into something that you guys don't realize in business. In business, you have to have psychology and understand finance. The two most crucial parts of business is finance and psychology, guys. Psychology is learning how to control the human mind without even realizing you're being controlled. What I mean by that, and that's that could be positive or negative, how you want to take it, but what I mean by that is saying a lot of these companies, the most successful companies, know when to promote, know how to market themselves, know how to place their product in that store uh, for this promotional price for however, at this right specific time, because they know what we want. They know when we're, 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 we want something, we're attracted to something, what we find attractive, um, to piggyback off of what I was saying with Fashion Nova, um, you know, and thus far, many other companies of that sort. Getting the right celebrities to promote their products and, bland, and brands, that's also important. Do you think LVMH did it correctly, just stumped on Rihanna to, to get Fenty Beauty? Fenty Beauty when she was thinking about building that that uh, cosmetic line? No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to educate you on something right now. LVMH knew what they're doing. And LVMH, Bernard Onstall, whatever, the French, the French CEO, LVMH became the third richest person in the world that became a centi-billion. That is a, a six-figure billionaire. Thanks in large part to Rihanna. They won't tell you that. 
But they know Rihanna is an icon around the world. Not even just America, around the world. And she has a line coming out that is successful. It is attractive. It attacks pop culture. They jump right on it. Companies do that all the time. That's why they have celebrities come into a lot of their events when they're launching a product like Apple, Amazon, etc. Why they love work. A lot of these CEOs, founders love working with these celebrities because they're building. They're building because they're targeting us, the consumer, most important, as you would know. We love celebrity culture. Celebrities, we look at, we revere them. We, we love them as gods. We look at them as some aspect of gods. I mean, you think I'm joking. Go look at Kanye, Kanye West church service. It almost looks like a cult in there, and there's a reason for that. We love celebrity culture. They're rich. They're loved from the public eye anyway. And we envy them because, again, they're known around the world. We want to be popular. We all, we all want a form of popularity without even us saying it a lot of times. But like I said, you don't have to necessarily be an Amazon or Apple. But you may be sitting in your cubicle right now. You may be building your business right now. You may be out. You may be doing whatever you're doing, whatever job, whatever business that you own. Understand something. In order to grow, you must learn to innovate. Innovation is the one, one key component, I will say, that will always be required in your job, in your business, to be successful. If you don't understand how a company innovates, learn it. If you don't understand how to innovate your business, learn it. Ask the questions. Watch the videos. Watch how the most popular products that you buy Watch how their company promotes their product, their business, to the consumer, which is you. Watch how they do it. Watch how they move. You don't have to know celebrities. You just have to know who to place your product with, the time to promote your product, the pricing you want to put your product, the place where you want to put your product on. And it's everywhere, guys. Fashion Nova, Amazon. We're all on Instagram, guys. We all are on Facebook. We all can build an app. Some apps are even free. So the excuse of I have to pay ten to twenty thousand. No, 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 no. You're just lazy and uncomfortable to do more research to find a place that they you don't have to even pay money necessarily to build your app. Or if you're gonna pay the money, you don't have to pay almost 10 to 20,000. And that's not a knock on anybody building apps, but I'm just giving y'all the game. Understand how the four Ps move in this world and you will be successful. If you want to be where you are in life, be in terms of however you want to move, like I said, you don't have to own a business. You and a lot of times, I don't think everybody should own a business because, again, where that's something where a lot of times I think people follow trends, some people for the most part. And that's a lot of work. That's a lot of sacrifice. That's a lot of revenue being pulled in. A lot of times, you know, a lot of people may not necessarily understand a lot of sleepless nights that you may have. That's okay. But understand the four Ps, like I said. That's how you're going to move in this world. That's how you're going to grow. But I want to end this with saying what I discussed with Nipsey Hussle. Brief history of Nipsey Hussle um, for you guys. Nipsey Hussle, like I said, was a rapper, but for the most part, what I love more so for him and I want to share with you guys is entrepreneurial ventures. He cut, he denied three deals before he had ownership of his own label deal. All Money In Records. He built Venture ni Vector 90, excuse me, with um, a guy that he knew from, that he connected with named David Gross. Um, I believe that's the young uh, the man's in, uh, name. Excuse me. And, and he was an investment banker. Nipsey Hussle wasn't dumb. He understood how to move, how to build a vision that he had by connecting with the right individual. What do investment bankers usually have? Capital. 
knowledge to the to the finance world that allows you to build your revenue that allows you to understand how to move the four p's nipsey hustle didn't understand that nipsey hustle read a book called contagious for anybody that's listening check that book out nipsey hustle learned in that book where where a, a owner charged a, a, a special philly cheesesteak that he charged for a hundred dollars that's product and placement what made that Philly cheesesteak so so popular was the word of mouth of travel. He was charging $100 for a cheesesteak. A good cheesesteak that might even be a great. I didn't have it, but like I said, he charged his mixtape Crenshaw. He adopted that by charging $100 for his mixtape. Had Jay-Z buying 100 for $100. You do the math. What do you think that is? That equates to? That's four zeros, ladies and gentlemen. $10,000 for a mixtape? What? Man, you guys ain't hearing me. To end, to end, like I said, Nipsey Hussle had the vision of creating Vector 90. For you guys that are listening, check out Vector 90. That is the urban we work. What that does is it places programs, teaches what I'm teaching right now to the urban community. I wanted to make note of that because a lot of times we fall in love with the Amazon and forget about the Vector 90s. We fall, excuse me, let me use the right terminology. We fall in love with the we work and forget the Vector 90s of the world. So like I said, it's something that you guys should look into. I gave you guys the blueprint from what I know in terms of how large firms benefit, how large firms benefit for collabing with the consumer, for us, for product placement. As a startup business, as an individual working a nine to five job, you can do investing by just watching how the wealthy do it. How the people like a Jeff Bezos to Nipsey Hussle moved, how they hung around the right in the right individuals, asked the right questions, read the right books. There's, that's not a coincidence that a CEO, they say a CEO reads 100 books, I think about a year or something like that. That's knowledge that they're gaining. A lot of times the books they're reading caters to their business, their brand, their product. I read books myself. I read my read daily. Contagious I'm reading right now. There's a reason I'm reading that because a lot of knowledge that I'm gaining from what this free game in this world is giving you. When I mean by free game, I mean in the sense of knowledge that's out there that's available to anybody. It's accessible to anybody. You can do it just by learning, by asking the right question. If you feel lazy to read, watch videos. If you don't feel like if you don't feel like watching videos or reading, just ask questions. Ask, ask people that, ask your manager. It doesn't have to be a business in terms of you running a business question. But there's a reason why your manager is a manager. What did he or she do for 10 to 20 years? Even less. Some people do now two to five years to uh, progress. That's how you learn. You learn how to move because you allow yourself to learn how they do it in terms of the right and wrong. And you adapt to your, you adapt to your own world how you move, the right things that you do. Steady that individual. Maybe that person staying a couple extra hours, uh, you know, as opposed to just leaving right at four or five. Maybe that individual, as opposed to having to cram everything in one, does a little here, makes themselves seem busy so that the, the manager seems like, oh, this person's doing, like he's always, bu- oh, he's always doing something. He or she's always doing something, doing this and that. Learn the psychology of business. Learn the psychology of corporations, these big corporations, because they know the psychology. Obviously, they understand what the consumer needs. What Because, again, they themselves are a consumer in their own right, but don't, don't get me twisted. But their former consumer is to the masses. They need to understand what moves the culture. Every company that you know, every big billionaire, millionaire that you may watch, they move the culture. But like I said, I'm going to end with this, like I said to you guys. The only way that you're going to grow is by learning and doing. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to ask questions to learn from those that came before you. There's there's no, everybody is doesn't know everything. You're not all known. There's nobody in this world that knows something. That There's a reason why when you watch a lot of videos, these rich entrepreneurs and stuff, they always ask them questions. They always they always want, want, want to gain more knowledge. They always want to understand what moves the culture, what, what, what the world is transitioning into. A lot of the other individuals that don't want to learn or just want to stay complacent, just watch how they move. You tell me how 
things are working for them. And they, they a lot of times, you watch somebody long enough, they'll tell you all you need to know. I'll leave that with you. But like I said, guys, you set yourself up for five to ten years from now. So what are you doing now that's going to help you in the future to come? Thank you. Follow us on um, Instagram at Danzo Financial Group, uh, at Twitter as well, and Facebook at Danzo Financial Group. Again, we also have Danzo Business News. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook coming soon. We do have an app coming soon. We do have an ebook coming soon, a financial literacy ebook. Follow us, tell a friend. If you love this episode, subscribe on our YouTube channel at Danzo Financial Group. Again, LLC. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Check us out. I'm going to play some tunes for you guys. Looking forward to hearing from you guys soon. Thank you. You guys have a lovely day. I'm going to play some uh, Dave East. Um, I think Dave East got a new album. I'm a fan of Dave East. So I'm going to play some tunes for you guys. Hmm. I wonder what I should play. I don't feel this. Yo, why Jacquees? Jacquees yeah. always taking everybody's songs. I ain't no man on me. You, you got me thinking, and I'm thinking, and I'm dreaming. This is Davey's new album, Survival. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Danzo Financial Group. Thank you. Okay, you got me thinking. Yes, ma'am. Come move into my past. I cannot leave you alone. She said, Call me when you be alone. 42, I don't drink no Patron. I can't wait till I get you alone. I can't wait till you get out them clothes. Got your nails done and they matching your toes. I'm trying to be committed, my just let me hit it before I get back on this road. She texts my phone, says she all alone and she got a room at the West. I hope she got over that attitude. I tried to send a DM to her best friend. She left my name at the front desk. Got an extra key when she checked in.